Hey everyone, Urban Fishkeeper here. Hope you're all doing well and you've had a good week. Those of you that got back to work this week for the first time this year, I hope it was a good start to your year. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through what I consider probably to be one of the easiest little cichlids to breed or little dwarf cichlids to breed. And that in particular is the Crebensis. Now I have some Crebensis behind me here and they're in this tank. I'm not sure if you can clearly see on the camera, but there's, there's the parents there with a whole lot of, lot of fry. Now, I regard them as most definitely one of the easiest dwarf or small cichlids to breed. Um, they, you know, they rate up in there in the top, top five for me when it comes to ease of breeding. Um, they're probably not as easy to breed as something like convict cichlids, um, but the downside to convicts are that they'll destroy everything else in the aquarium most of the time including their partners. Where Crebensis aren't that bad when it comes to that. Crebensis is a really nice fish to keep in a community tank as well. What you just have to remember or take, be aware of is that if you're keeping them in a community tank, make sure that it is well planted, you've got some wood and some uh, you know, wood roots and that kind of thing at the bottom of the aquarium, hiding spaces and so forth. And you also don't put in any other well, my recommendation is you don't put in, in any other bottom dweller type cichlids. Um, yeah, little catfish and that is fine, but any other small fish that like the bottom area, the cichlids will give them a go and, and will go hard, especially when they're breeding. Um, you know, they will have no trouble attacking any fish that is down in that bottom layer of your community aquarium. But a great little fish to keep in a community aquarium as well. Now, when it comes to breeding crebensis, the first thing you need to do is you need to try and obtain a pair. Now there's a couple of ways of obtaining pairs. The one is that you can go into, and this, to me this is the best way, is you go into a, your local fish store that's got crebensis, and you stand and you observe the aquarium that they're in. And normally the fish store will have quite a few in. And if they're not tiny or juvenile, and they've started maturing, you will quickly notice a dominant male or a male chasing others away from the female that that he's with and if you then see that behavior effectively you will see that pair to one side or staying together while they chase others away from them that is the the pair that you grab the advantage to that is that they are already effectively bonded so when you move them into another aquarium it's not that they need to get to know each other and therefore bond which has risks attached to it which i'll go through in a second but it means that you're getting a pair and you know it's a pair, they've bonded already effectively, you can move them into an aquarium and you know within a couple of days you will have um, and then spawning, you'll have fry swimming around in your aquarium very quickly. Now the other thing you can do is you can go out and you can buy a whole, you know, not a whole lot, but you can buy you know maybe four or six of them, you put them in a bigger aquarium, you let them go through exactly that same process, maybe put them in your community tank, um, provided you can catch them out again when you need to and you let them then pair up and make their decision on the partners and once you've got a pair developing you catch that pair out or you buy a pair from a friend or somebody that's bred them and said look I don't want to breed them anymore. The one thing about crebensis is uh, especially where I am in, in Australia and in, the que in Queensland uh, there's not a shortage so and even when there is a bit of a shortage they still don't you know, they don't get, you're not going to get a lot of money for crebensis if you breed them in big quantities. So if it's a fish that you want to breed because you want to make some money from it, you're probably not going to make a lot from it. Maybe just pay for themselves, that's effectively what you'll get out of it. But if you want to experience a really stunning little cichlid that, that spawns easily, that breeds well, and the parents look after the fry really well um, the majority of the time, then a crebensis is definitely the go and I'd recommend it. The other good thing about crebensis, if you get a pair and they are already a bonded pair, you can pop them in a 20. I mean, I'm breeding these in a 20 liter aquarium. Um, there must be, I don't know, maybe 50 babies in there. With the parents, no problems at all. Now, the, the challenge you'll have with a 20 is if you go out and you buy a male and a female, and they're not bonded and you then throw them into something as tiny as a 20 even with a lot of plants and substrate and so forth you definitely run the risk that the male will, will bully the female hammer her really badly if she's not ready or she doesn't want to um, 
mate or she doesn't want to bond or any of that kind of thing. He'll bully her and, and you know, you could end up with him killing her. So the selection and getting the, the pair, the bonded pair, um, prior to and going to a small aquarium is quite essential. Again, they do like, you know, Crebences have bred, been bred commercially for so many years that the water is, that is not so much of a factor anymore and softness and, you know, hardness and all that kind of stuff is no longer a major factor in breeding Crebences because they've been, you know, commercially available for, for a long time. I, though, like to breed them in a pH of 7 or below, so around about 6.6, 6.8. I like to have a lot of structure in the little tank, so wood. Um, I use little flower pots, break those in half. Those become the spawning sites, and I have some of that spread um, through the aquarium as well. And if possible, I like to have a fair amount of plants, even if it's floating plants, in, them, in there for them. The spawning process is quite simple. Uh, the parents will clean wherever they're going to spawn, the female will lay, the male will fertilize and they, they look after the eggs really well. Uh, most, most pears, even the young pears, you know, won't go and eat the eggs or eat the fry as soon as they, they come out. Once the fry are free swimming, they don't need to be fed anything small. Um, if you've got some microworm here, you can put in some microworm for them. But they don't need it, they can go straight onto brine shrimp, newly hatched brine shrimp, as soon as they're free swimming. And if you keep them in an aquarium that's like these 20s, that's got plants in it, sponge filter, etc, etc, um, and they're running the Madden filters, as you know, there will be a lot of little bugs and infosauria and that kind of thing in the water for them to eat over those first few days anyway. So, a newly hatched brine shrimp is fine. Temperature, anywhere between 24, 26 to 26 degrees that are mined um, and, and really, uh, really easy to keep. Uh, preconditioning, you don't have to go through a major preconditioning process for the parents. Uh, feed them what you normally feed. Um, you know, I feed a bit of frozen brine shrimp, um, occasionally a little bit of um, uh, blood worm, and then they get their, their DRP or their, their dry food as well. Um, and then when, when the the fry is in there and I'm feeding newly hatched brine shrimp, obviously they enjoy that as well. Again, you know, when you've got a tank this small and you've got, you know, whatever, 50 or so in there, it's then just a question of deciding when to move them out. So I will probably leave these in here. They are, no, I think they're about two weeks, maybe even a little bit more. I'll probably leave them in there for another week and then we'll move them out on their own and then just continue raising them from there. And then within a couple of days, it's more than likely that the parents will spawn again and the process will start all over. But, you know, a really fun fish, really great fish to, to keep. Um, if you have a look at this video, uh, this is of the parents as well as of the fry in the tank. And, you know, they, they're really good parents and they look after. So if you're looking for something that you want to breed, you want to experience, see what it's like, you want to see... You know, some fish looking after their babies and, you know, a whole school of babies with parents and not the one chasing them or trying to eat them or that kind of thing. Then Crebensis is definitely worth a try. It's not an expensive fish to get. It's a really easy fish to keep, really easy fish to, to breed. Um, and to start of 2022, you know, what a great little fish to start of the year if you want to breed something. So anyway, guys, that's, that's it on breeding crebences. Um, give it a go. Try it. You know, I breed them in 20s. So, you know, you don't need a massive aquarium to breed them. Um, you know, there are many people who say, well, look, ideally you need a bit of a bigger aquarium if you can uh, to breed them. You know, possibly a two foot would be ideal or maybe even, you know, something bigger. Look, most of the people that breed them would breed them in nothing smaller than a two foot. Um, I'm breeding it in a 20 litre and provided it's a good compatible pair and they're not aggressive towards each other, there's plenty of structure, there's good plants, the water is good, it's not super fast flowing water neither, they're, they're not mad about that. Um, there's no reason you can't breed them in a 20 and enjoy what, you know, what's happening behind me here with the parents and all the babies. Alright guys, have an awesome week. Um, Put comments in if you've given it a go, you know, if, if Crebensis is one of your favorites to breed as well, let me know in the comments. Um, Till next week, have a good week, stay safe, look after yourself, 
Urban Fish Keeper out.